The Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York is more than one of the largest Christian churches in the world. It's also a house of worship that uses the arts to communicate to its worshipers and visitors. I came here to see a traveling exhibition organized by Caravan, which has been installed in the chapels and passageways of this magnificent structure. Amen, a prayer for the world, is on exhibit in New York at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine, now through November 23rd. It is one of the artistic programs of Caravan, which has started in 2009 in Cairo, Egypt, as an interfaith arts festival, and which has since grown into a global effort to encourage bridge building through the arts. Founder of Caravan, Rev. Paul Gordon Chandler, believes the arts can serve as an effective medium of respect, understanding, sharing, and even friendship between the cultures of the East and West. I spoke with the Reverend by Skype to discuss this exhibit in more detail. Reverend Chandler, thanks so much for speaking with us. Can you give us a little background on your inspiration for founding Caravan? I grew up in West Africa, uh, where in a country where the arts uh, were very prominent, uh, such as and both uh, the visual art and the other uh, mediums of art, like music, and literature, and film. Uh, Yusu Endur, for example, one of the singers from West Africa, oh, yeah. someone who grew up in my neighborhood. So I, was, I grew up around that. I also grew up as a Christian within a Muslim uh, context, and most of my friends were Muslim. And I would see the tension uh, that existed at times. And as a young man, I always remember thinking there has to be another way. Um, it wasn't really until living in Cairo where we began to put the two together, my love for the arts and this idea of bridging between creeds and cultures uh, related to the Middle East, and by that, largely the monotheistic faiths, you know, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Right. Um, so we started Caravan as, at that time, uh, an interfaith arts festival in Cairo involving Eastern and Western art, Middle Eastern and Western artists, uh, and it really took off. Uh, it, this, the response surprised us all, which led to another uh, festival and another and another, and Finally, it evolved into uh, really an NGO in a sense to simply give it some structure because they were popping up all over the place, this idea of using the arts to bridge between uh, uh, faiths, uh, especially faiths related to the Middle East and the West. And for this exhibit on men, how did the theme of prayer evolve? As I was talking to a number of the Muslim artists in Egypt, they uh, had this fascination with Amun and the ancient pharaonic god, who in many ways, prior to Akhenaten and Abraham, was the first to be the one to, in a sense, focus this kind of a virtual monotheism that was developing hmm. around Amun, because he was so supreme within the, the divinities and the godhead at that time. Then there's this tendency in parts of the Middle East to relate Amun to the word Amen, or Amin, which of course closes Christian, Muslim, and Jewish blessings and prayers. And that's kind of what led into this idea of prayer is a commonality, regardless of one's faith tradition and how they see prayer. So we have four fiberglass sculptures, as you know. Each one can represent one of the monotheistic faiths, but it's done in such a way that it also represents all of them. And then there's a fourth figure that is a kind of a universal figure in the sense of expressing the wonderment and awe and, and maybe even gratitude at human existence. Uh, and that's the one that's standing with the arms out and looking up. So they, in a sense, they represent us all, but they also specifically represent those faiths that come out of the Middle East. And Amen has been traveling around the globe for a while now. What are some of your impressions? This one started at the Museum of Modern Art in Cairo, and then moved to, uh, that was in June, and then it moved to National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. Uh, and I just got the numbers yesterday. Uh, they estimate about 40,000 came through during the four weeks that it was there wow, to that's, see it. that's very impressive. One of the things we discovered is, uh, in doing this kind, these kinds of exhibitions, is if we take them out of the traditional art venues such as galleries or even museums, uh, and the exception would be some really world museums, but you tend to get people to, that see them that would not normally go to an art uh, initiative, and therefore the audience is much broader. 
and they begin to engage with it in a different way because it's outside of simply an art place. And so that's one of our, uh, the interest we have of placing these various exhibitions in cathedrals uh, around the world because they're not only, of course, religious sites but, or sacred venues, but they're also cultural venues uh, that reach a broader audience. Has the public embraced this exhibit as you'd hoped? Yes, I, I believe so. I mean, we've had uh, a lot of positive <clears throat> responses and, of course, media coverage, which is always encouraging. Uh, it's still there for another, you know, almost four weeks in New York City. And I get emails almost daily uh, about uh, uh, expressions of, uh, you know, reflection on them. Uh, and there are, uh, there are some that, of course, find them, they wish they were set up differently and all of that. But generally, they're, it's uh, very, very positive. What has made this exhibit feel like a success? How do you know if you're indeed building bridges between our cultures? I think the biggest feedback uh, comes to me, uh, that has come to me, that has most impressed me, has been from the Muslim imams. Because there's something, uh, there's a, of course, there's a stereotype in Isla uh, of Islam as being anti-image. Of course, Judaism is, as well, but especially within Islam and in, in our modern society, people are familiar with that. Uh, and to see these imams, not only, for example, in Cairo, not only uh, enjoying the exhibition, but actually in, a, in their own way, blessing it, endorsing it, what it does is it frees and liberates the Muslim artist. And many of them tend to be uh, more, uh, I would say, I don't necessarily use the word secular, but non-practicing, if you will, uh, in their faith. And yet they sometimes feel the constraints of those that are. And so it kind of opens the door for them in a new way. And that's always been, uh, that's been most encouraging. You know, I was really impressed by the artists chosen for this exhibit. So many types of visual expressions. How did you go about curating this show? Yeah, it's a great question. What's happened now since we've done this for a number of years is that we have people applying, requesting to be a part of this. Uh, we I mean, obviously we have a kind of a grid or a, a criterion that uh, that we look at, but uh, I think behind it most of all is they either have to be uh, they have to be a full time artist. This is their career, uh, and secondly, they we look try to blend between those that are quite uh, well known, renowned artists in the Middle East, and those that have have, uh, have shown great promise and are emerging. So we try to, that's kind of a thing where, in a sense, giving younger artists an opportunity to exhibit with well-known artists uh, in a group exhibition, which does not happen a lot in the Middle East. Uh, and then a, a balance of men and women. So it's uh, from notoriety to, to uh, gender to age, and then, of course, uh, religious uh, uh, as well, meaning a real mi a mixture of Muslim and Christian and those of Jewish uh, background as well. Well, I want to commend you and congratulate you on a marvelously public exhibition that also makes you think and feel. Oh, thank you. And it sounds like you've been just as successful in your job at bridge building. That, yeah, that is bridge building. And it also is, uh, it changes uh, really in many ways uh, uh, expressions of modern culture. And it enables some of the artists to think differently and express differently uh, in their own context, which, uh, which is a side benefit of these uh, exhibitions. One of the things I, w I would say is that we tend to focus on trying to, especially in the Middle East, be as public as possible, get on TV, have bishops and imams, and, uh, well, of course, in the future, if we don't, we're doing anything where there's a... Uh, a Jewish population, rabbis, but because in the Middle East, if they see friendship vis visibly uh, and uh, publicly on a television, it kind of changes the way they act in their local communities uh, because it's, it's an endorsement that it's okay. Uh, and so there, you know, there's all these other ways in which we use the exhibition to uh, have an impact and influence on society. Most interestingly, uh, we have found that it's the Muslim artists that are most 
uh, that are really wishing to have the exhibition in a cathedral. That's wild. Uh, largely because it's a novelty for them. And uh, they see it as more of a sacred space. And it's, it's us actually having to explain to them that in the West nowadays, yes, there is a, an element of uh, uh, you know, devoted, uh, religiously oriented people that go to a cathedral, but it's also a cultural space. Unlike a mosque in the Middle East, right, which is right. very specifically spiritually related, you know. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, so that's where it all started from. Was we're actually the Muslim artist requesting that, and that's how we focused on St. Paul's Cathedral. Well, listen, thank you so much. I, I think we're no, thank you time. very much. I look forward to the video and look forward to doing more with you in the future. And uh, I'm excited about what you're doing. Thanks for doing this on Saturday, too. That helped me a lot. Well, it's a Sabbath. Don't tell anybody. Have a good weekend. You too, Paul. Take care, Jeff. This is a wonderful exhibit that all New Yorkers should try to see before Thanksgiving. Perhaps we can all take a moment this holiday season to reflect on how we can build more bridges of understanding with those who seek it. This is Jeffrey Weiner from TheGreatNude.tv. Thanks for watching.